I recently had an interview with the startup and these are the questions that they have asked me in an interview. So the first question was, what are the challenges that you have faced in LWC? Now, whole and sole reason of this question is to understand the depth or the knowledge of depth you have inside the LWC. So to answer this question, I recently solved one problem that we had this kind of path in our community. And on each path, we had a form where user is going to populate the value. So let's say I am on need analysis path right now. And if I populate the values after populating the value, if I reload this page, what used to happen is that the value used to get vanished. All the values used to get vanished. So to fix that issue, what we had to do is before the record was submitted or the, before the record was saved, we have to store the data within the cache. So even though if he is on any stage, he, if he reloads the page, the value pertains as it is. Now, the problem with this approach is that let's say I filled up all the details till this stage. And if I clicked on save after clicking on save again, if I click on the new button and the form reappears, the values were pre-populated. And the reason was because we stored the data in the cache, but we did not empty at all. So on click on save, we have to also empty the data from the cache. Now again, this problem was solved, but there was one more problem. Let's say you are till third stage. And after the third stage, you clicked on the cancel button. Let's say there was a form, there's a save button and there's a cancel button. As soon as you click on the cancel button, you should be backtracked to, or you should be redirected to the main page. But again, if you click on the new button after clicking on cancel button, if you again click on the new button to fill up the forms, again, the values used to be pre-populated. So over here as well, on click of the cancel button, we have to empty the cache. So this was the recent issue that I fixed. So that's what I answered for this. Let's move on to the next question that I have a trigger, which is querying custom metadata in the for loop. Now, if the query is going to execute 120 times, will I get 101 SQL error? Now, to answer this question, it's quite simpler that whatever data the custom metadata is going to store or custom setting is going to store, it's going to store the data within the cache itself. It's not going to store within the actual object like account, contact, all this data, it actually stores within the uh, like object database. But over, uh, the data that is stored inside the custom metadata or custom setting is frequently accessed and that's the reason why it's stored within the cache. So even if you are going to make a query, you're not going to make a hard query. It's a soft query. So soft query are not counted against the governor limits. So now as you're going to query the custom metadata within the, within the for loop, and even if you execute or if you even if you query it more than 120 times, you won't face any issue because you are querying the data from the cache and not from the actual object itself. So you are not going to face that issue. Let's move on to the next question is that write a batch class to delete all the accounts which are created five years back and also delete all the related contacts to that account. Now to answer this question, I wrote actually a batch class. So I'm not going to write the interface of it, but write, directly start with the batch class. So public public database dot query locator start database dot batchable bc. So over here, I will need to query all the records which were created five years before before right so to do that i'm going to first of all capture the date five years date right i need to capture that so date dot today dot add years i used add years function with minus five value so this is the way i will get the date five years before then after that i used return database dot get query locator in that I actually wrote a query. The query was something like this select ID comma name from account where created date is less than five years date. So using this, I will also write equals to using this. I got all the accounts which were created five years before. Now the challenge was Inside the execute method, first I had to delete the contact. And after that, because if you see, I have to delete all the related contacts and then I have to delete the accounts. To do that, inside the execute method, I did the following public void execute database dot batchable bc comma list of account acc list. So I've got almost all the accounts 
now once i've got the account i created a set of id set account equals to new set of id once i got set of the id i for loop the account that i had acc list i for loop all the accounts that i had and after that what i did was i captured the id of those accounts right set of id acc dot id and finally what i did was i queried all the contacts related to that list of contact con list equals to select id from contact where account id in right so basically with this what i will do is i will get all the related contacts so next i'm going to delete the contact i will of course do the size checking but right now i'm not doing to save the time and after that once the account were deleted okay i can creep a boolean variable that once the account were deleted successfully i will delete the con account sorry once the contact were deleted i will delete the accounts as well okay you can do the size checking to uh, make sure that the account contact is deleted first and only then the account is deleted okay so you can do that so this was the query that i wrote basically what i did was i got all the accounts using this following query i got all the accounts which were created five years before from today then i got all the accounts and then i got all the contacts related to that account i deleted the contact first and then i deleted the account so let's move to the next question that write a query to fetch all the accounts with no associated contacts at all so basically we have to query all the accounts which have no contact at all to do that i wrote the following query select id from account where id in not in sorry not in select id from not select id that is select account id from contact so this is how i wrote the query now with the help of this query you are going to get all the accounts which won't have any contact at all let's move on to the next question that is tell me the governor limits that you have faced and how did you fix it so my favorite two governor limits that i tell every interviewer is that one is cpu time limit exceed error okay exceed error and one is mixed dml op operation okay these are the two favorite things that i always tell now fix to fix this issues to fix the mixed dml first of all when does the mixed dml appears the mixed dml appears whenever you are going to update or if you are going to insert the setup and non setup object within the same transaction itself that's where you get mixed dml error now to fix that what you need to do is you need to separate the threads out so updating the setup object in a separate transaction and non setup in a separate transaction to do that you can use future apex you can uh, update the setup or a non setup object inside the future apex and in the on the normal transaction you can update a setup or non setup object just segregate both of them that will fix the issue that is mixed dml issue next issue that is cpu time limit exceed error now this kind of issues usually comes that let's say if you are trying to execute a particular code and if your code async synchronously if you are trying to execute a code and if it is going to take more than 10 seconds that's where you are going to get cpu time limit exceed error so this means whatever code that you are going to write it should get executed within 10 seconds it is for synchronous but for asynchronous it is 60 seconds now to fix this issue what you can do is you can reduce the number of queries you can reduce the number of fors you can reduce you can try to use more maps list and basically optimizing the code but let's say if you are doing the same inside the synchronous apex but let's say you have optimized the code to the max now you cannot optimize further in that cases what you can do is you can move this synchronous apex code to the asynchronous so that you have higher limit and things will execute as per as the need so these are the usually answers that i give because that are well prepared from my end let's move on to the next question that i am getting a cpu time limit except error in the test class but i am not getting the same error while normally executing the functionality then why are we getting this issue how do we fix it first of all and why are we getting this issue first of all so if you understand this issue that what is what's happening is that while a user is normally executing that particular code it's working perfectly fine but when they wrote the test class for the same what happens is that that test class is giving them cpu time limit exit error so first thing is pretty much sure that 
the code that you have written is perfectly optimized and hence it is not giving any kind of issue in normal conditions but then there is a chance that your test class has some kind of problem and that is the reason why you are getting cpu time limit exit error so how do we fix it to fix that most probably the reason would be that <clears throat> whatever dml statements that we are making we are not making within test.start test and test.stop test so that can be the possibility that your whatever dml that we are making we are not making in within the test.start test and test.stop test and that's the reason why we are running out of the time and the execution is taking more than 10 seconds the another reason would be most probably that you are using more for loops or you are doing a, what we call recursive uh, apex uh, like recursive test class calling or re recursive functions calling is happening with your uh, test class and that's the reason why there is a possibility that cpu time limit exit might come another issue that might be that you are trying to do too many queries okay you are doing multiple queries in the test class itself and that can be the also reason uh, that you are getting the cpu time limit exit error now how to fix it if you still want to do this kind of functionality, do it within test.start test and test.stop test. So you will have additional governor limits. So this was the answer that I gave. Next is the coding question that was asked to me. The question was every account can have multiple opportunities. So that's quite easy, right? Every account has the multiple opportunities, and there is an amount field on the opportunity. <clears throat> okay, on the opportunity, there is an amount field. So we need to sum up all the amounts for a particular account. And we, need, and we need to populate the sum of these amounts on the custom field named as total which is an account so basically every opportunity will have that amount field you just need to sum that up and show it on the account in the total field of the account so we, are, we can do it using roll up summary field but they have asked it to do it using the trigger so how would you do it so this is the exact answer that i gave okay i am just giving the answer you can also improve it you can optimize it but i am just giving the answer that i gave in the interview so trigger OPP trigger <clears throat> on opportunity okay after update after insert <coughs> so here what I did was I created a map first of all for opportunity OPP colon trigger dot new so whatever opportunities will created or updated let's take that first of all and then what I did was I created a map of id comma integer <clears throat> map of account 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 and sum equals to new map of id comma integer so i've created a map in such a way and then next what i did was i populated the values inside the map over here itself if this map contains key that is contains opp dot account id if i have this okay in that if like for an example within this map if there was already provided like if there is already uh, account id is provided in that case what i'm going to do is i'm going to first of all let's consider integer final value okay i'm going to create a, a integer final value in which what i'll do is i'll get the value which is existing from it okay that is opp dot account id plus I will add the new value that has been inserted opp dot amount underscore underscore c okay so i'll just zoom out a bit so that you can understand it within one go okay again i'll zoom out a bit okay so once that was done <clears throat> what i was doing is in this in this map itself i was overriding the previous value with the new value i'll put opp dot account id comma final value okay but let's say if the map if the field or the account was not already populated in that case i went to else inside else what i did was i just put the whatever value that we have opp amount that i have okay so try to understand the logic what i have done over here so first of all let's say this is the map okay first time let's say first opportunity you are trying to insert let's say you have inserted five opportunities okay five opportunities which are of same account okay on the same account you have inserted five opportunities so in that case first of all this map won't contain this key so it's going to go inside the else okay so for the same account first of all the amount will be populated let's say one zero hundred okay so for the next opportunity now we have this key 
right this as this opportunity is tagged to the same account we will have this key now so it will go inside this part that is if part it is going to go so what it's going to go it what it's going to do is it is going to first of all get the older value using this it is going to get the older value and say so the and let's say the new value was 200 so what it is going to do 100 plus 200 that will be the final value will, value will be 300 and for the same account the value will be populated as 300 and vice versa it will be happening for almost all the accounts now once that is done uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to query all the accounts with this particular id let's select id from account <clears throat> along with that query the amount field as well sorry not amount total field from account where id in dot key set <clears throat> now once i found it out okay what i did was inside acc oh sorry acc dot total what i did was i populated the total value okay map of account id dot get acc dot id using this what i'm going to do is get is i'm going to get the total upper uh, for that particular opportunity what was the total amount right what was the complete total amount i will get it and i will populate it within this total field so after that i'll create a list and i'll just update the list i'm not writing it out because it will waste our time but basically i'll just create a list and i will populate that list so i'll just once more uh just give, go through this particular code of what we have what i have done over here is i'll zoom out a bit okay so what i did was first of all let's say i'm going to insert five account for five opportunities right i'm going to loop over e each of them let's say five opportunities inserted under the same account so first opportunity let's say but uh, it had 100 as the amount okay so first in the first loop it's going to go inside the else so for that particular account we will populate the value as 100 okay next time i will have the account id because we are populating within the same account right we are going to create the opportunity under the same account so next time it's going to go inside the if condition where it will get the existing value using this map and new value using opp.amount and it will populate it within the final and it will add the addition inside the same account so this way we will get the total value and using this map itself we can get the total value within the account itself as well so now before moving to the last question if you're not feeling confident before going to any kind of interview you can have one-to-one -one mock interview with me by clicking the top mid link below let's move on to the next question that is what is apex sharing and how to use it now i have recently created a video on how apex sharing is and when to use it and what exactly is an apex sharing so whenever you want to do sharing using apex that's where you use apex sharing right now when do we use it for an example let's say i have account okay and when account is updated i want to update the contact <clears throat> and when contact is updated i want to up update the opportunity now on a specific value of the opportunity okay specific value of the opportunity if i want to show the account if i want to share the account with a particular user i can do it only using apex sharing i cannot do it using normal sharing because normal sharing straightforwardly work on that particular object but let's say you kind of this kind of crazy functionality you have to build like an opportunity has a specific value you want to share that particular account with a particular user that's where you can use apex sharing okay now two more important factors inside the three actually is parent id okay inside the apex sharing is parent id parent id defines which records you want to share okay and then is a user or group id which defines whom you want to share share with okay and last in the final way is nothing but i believe is access level okay you can give read edit whatever it is whatever you want to give read write or read or whatever it might be okay you can give the every kind of access that you want so these were the exact questions that were asked to me in my interview if you found this video helpful i request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel